Hey everybody, video here for you today. This is my fourth Monday in a row, Ancient History News. Let's get it started off in Turkey. We are going down to Gordian, Ancient Gordian, and this is the tomb of King Midas. Here's Ancient Gordian. Mounds and other stuff beneath the ground right here. Shaft cut into this large hill or mound right here. Here's the entrance to the tomb of King Midas. But south of here, there was an important discovery made near the tomb of King Midas. There is this carving in the rock face here. And inside his tomb, inside the mound, he was buried inside a log structure here coming from over 2,500 years ago. This is physics.org, and I will leave all these links below. It says archaeologists from the Oriental Institute have discovered a lost ancient kingdom dating to 1400 BC to 600 BC which may have defeated Phrygia, the kingdom ruled by King Midas in battle. And there was a few different rulers named King Midas, and some legend behind that name. It says, University of Chicago scholars and students were surveying a site with Turkish and British colleagues last summer in southern Turkey called Turkmen Karahoyuk when a local farmer told them he'd seen a big stone with strange inscriptions while dredging a nearby irrigation canal. We rushed straight there, and we could see it still sticking out of the water. And they looked at that stone, and they found an ancient city. Here are some stone inscriptions. Here is the archaeological mound at Turkmen Karahoyuk, and it appears an unknown city covered at least 300 acres here. But a local farmer finding a stone sticking out of the ground that had inscriptions on it, that sounds a lot like the discovery of Gobekli Tepe about 25 years ago. Let's move on. Next story, let's go down to the Roman Forum here. Rome, Italy. I have not talked about Rome for a while, but here, pretty important place, pretty famous historical place. But here, modern homes. Then you go down here, and you're really just going back in time. This is a pretty important place in Rome. Discovery was made right down here. Let's just read. This is BBC. It says, Romulus mystery experts divided on tomb of Rome's founding father. There was a tomb found down here when they did some excavation a work. A sarcophagus discovered in the remains of an ancient temple in Rome is causing a stir among historians who cannot agree if it belongs to the Italian city's legendary founder, Romulus. So there is some divided opinions here. Here's a look where this was found. It says the entrance to the underground shrine in Rome, believed to be dedicated to Romulus. So pretty important determination if this was his tomb or not. Stories speak of the presence of the tomb of Romulus in this area of the Roman Forum. Fabled characters Romulus and Remus were said to have been the twin sons of the god Mars and the priestess Rhea Silvia. So the twin sons, there is other twin legends in Mayan and other cultures. Just found that interesting. It says, according to myth, the brothers were nursed by a she-wolf Romulus is said to have set out an area around Palatine Hill to mark the city's boundary. One element of the Romulus and Remus story has Remus define his brother by leaping over the settlement's boundary walls, an act that cost him his life. All myth and legends have an element of truth. Ms. Rousseau added, I am convinced that there was a founding hero. The newly discovered temple will now be the subject of a thorough archaeological investigation and is expected to open to the public in two years. Let's move on. Next story, let's get real ancient. Let's go down to Shanandar Cave in Iraq. And this was the site of a pretty fascinating discovery, a real old discovery. Let's read. Here is a look at the cave entrance. Here's what it looks like from inside the cave. Pretty fascinating find here. This is the vintage news, and I'll try to spread around these websites that I use here, but Amazingly intact Neanderthal skeletons show sophisticated burial rites. Here's how they think these people looked. It says, an incredible Neanderthal skeleton has been found at a site which has taught us plenty about Neanderthal burial practices. Archaeologists are not only concerned with how past cultures and civilizations lived, but how they ended as well. Much can be learned about people by understanding the rituals surrounding the end of life. These rites reveal a great deal about a culture's level of sophistication, for example, and its religious beliefs can be inferred by how they buried people. Here's another look at the entrance to this cave where people lived a long, 
long time ago. One skeleton in particular, labeled Shanadar No. 4, became well known as the flower burial because bones were discovered with pollen clinging to the earth around the skeleton. The bones were identified as those of a 30 to 45 year old male, and the, and the find led some scientists to conclude that Neanderthals may have been more refined in their burial rituals than previously thought. If they were burying people with flowers, the thinking went, that indicated a certain sophistication not previously known. 70,000 years ago, burying people with flowers, pretty interesting. Let's move on. Let's move on here. Next story, let's go down to Urumaco, Venezuela. This is the Great Lakes Ledger. It says, car-sized ancient turtle species was found in South America. This thing was huge. It says, turtles with the size on par with that of a car used to roam the coast of South America more than 13 million years ago was discovered. A series of fascinating fossils have been recovered from two regions, offering valuable data about the imposing creatures. Here is the area where the turtle was found. In this article, it says, extinct South American giant turtle had 10-foot-wide horn shell. Seems he was kind of equipped for battle. It says, Venezuelan paleontologist Rodolfo Sanchez crouches next to the fossil shell of a male Stupendemius geographicus specimen. The giant turtle species lived some 8 million years ago across the southern tip South America. So that is a pretty interesting find coming from South America, giant turtle. Let's move on. Next story, let's go down to the Yucatan, Yaxuna. is the name of the place here. And this story just broke an hour ago, so I thought I'd throw this one in there. Kid, a powerful queen of Coba, one of the greatest cities of the ancient Maya world, build the longest Maya road to invade a smaller, isolated neighbor and gain a foothold against the emerging Chichen Itza Empire. Question has long intrigued Tracy Arden, archaeologist and University of Miami professor of anthropology. Now she and fellow scholars may be a step closer to an answer. After conducting the first LIDAR study of the 100 kilometer stone highway that connected the ancient cities of Koba, Yaxuna, and the Yucatan Peninsula 13 centuries ago, once used mainly by meteorologists to study clouds, LIDAR short for light detection and ranging technology is revolutionizing archaeology by enabling archaeologists to detect, measure, and map structures hidden beneath dense vegetation that, in some cases, has grown for centuries, engulfing entire cities. Here's a drawing of a carving on a stone monument in Koba that depicts a warrior queen who may have built the Great White Road to expand her domain. But using LIDAR, they plan a third dig this summer. It sits between the two ancient Mayan cities on the great white road that Arden says would have glowed brightly, even in the dark of night. As she noted, the road was as much an engineering marvel as the monumental pyramids the Maya erected across Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, and Honduras. Although built over undulating terrain, the road was flat, with the uneven ground filled in with huge limestone boulders and the surface coated with bright white plaster. It would have been a beacon through the dense green cornfields and fruit trees. All the jungle we see today wasn't there in the past because the Maya cleared these areas. But LIDAR, I have mentioned that many times before. Today, searching for what may be the longest Maya road ever built. And in this video, El Mirador, the huge Ledanta Pyramid and Lost Mayan Cities, I showed how one of these great white roads stretched across the jungle here. Just traces of it seen today from overhead. And to finish it off, a little of this day in history. It was 40 years ago today that the Miracle on Ice 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team finished off that miracle story, beating Finland for the gold medal two days after upsetting the Soviet Union is what is considered one of the greatest sports upsets of all time. What is my connection to this story? I was a kid in Bloomington, Minnesota. I was playing traveling hockey. And the U.S. Olympic team played their preseason Olympic schedule at Met Center, where the old North Stars used to play. And they used our arena, the Bloomington Ice Garden, as a home training base. So as kids, we got to share our home arena with maybe the most famous hockey team of all time. And for me as a sports fan, as a kid, as a hockey player, that is a memory of a lifetime. 
Those are five ancient history news stories that have recently been in the news and one this day in history story. Hope you thought that was cool and you all have a very nice day.